Hey guys, Ray Burke, Spray Wash Exterior Cleaning, Spray Wash Academy here. Today we are going to disassemble a Gould's booster pump, clean it up, and replace a few of the diffuser plates on there. This booster pump was ordered from the Power Wash store along with a skid that it's mounted to in June of 2017 so it's officially a year old. I've never done any kind of maintenance to it and it's used virtually every day. The rig that it's on uh, has produced about $225,000 over the past 12 months and we always wind up using the booster on virtually every job. It's not a requirement to remove the booster from your trailer. We've just done so here to make it easier for the filming of this. Uh, most of the times whenever we fix the boosters we're actually leaving them in place on the rigs. It's important to know that whenever you go to remove this tube that it has a reverse thread on there. So you'll actually turn it to the right to loosen it and to the left to tighten it. Whenever you're removing this tube make sure you grab only on the ends where there's threads and the, the tube is a little bit tougher. You don't want to grab the middle of the tube with a pair of vice grips because you can actually crush the tube and uh, ruin your pump. So grab at the ends of the pump where there's threads. It's a little more structurally sound. Next on the menu is removing the retaining clip. Get a screwdriver and pry this off. Behind this clip you'll notice that there are some shims that look kind of like thin washers. You'll want to remove those and keep track of how many shims were in that area. You can now slide the individual stages off. You may find some shims in between the stages. It's a good idea to keep track of where these were. However, it's not the end of the world if you miss a couple. It is important, however, to put the proper number back at the base of the shaft and the front of the shaft behind the retaining clip. Okay, each stage has three parts in that. You have your diffuser plate, you have the impeller, and then you have the stainless steel bowl. And here's one of the spacers uh, out of there. As you can see, all of this gets covered in a, in a scale, a hard water uh, calcium and, and sodium scale, because this is uh, you know, spinning 3,000 plus RPMs per minute, and it's actually causing some sodium dropout out of the water. Uh, everything's very rough, you can see it. This has, yeah, this booster was being used yesterday, so everything's still nice and wet. If I let this dry out for a while, this would become extremely hard. But you can see the, the coating that's on here. The outsides of all of these are rough, they should be smooth. Uh, so we're gonna dip this in a little muriatic acid bath and uh, that'll help eat away all of these mineral deposits on here and we can see what we're working with real well. We've made a mixture of 15% muriatic acid and 85% water. We're going to drop these individual stages in here and let this muriatic acid mixture eat the deposits off of the stages. Uh, when working with acid, always use your proper PPE, uh, glasses and gloves. Uh, and proper attire is critical during this stage. You'll want to soak those stages for about 15 minutes. Now is also a good time to take a muriatic acid soaked rag and uh, wipe down your shaft of this motor real well. Uh, that'll help get off any deposits that have built up in this area as well. We'll just wrap the rag around that shaft and then come back in and rub uh, off the deposits to help remove them on there. Uh, this should only take uh, four or five minutes itself. By doing this stage, it will make it much easier to reinstall the individual stages back onto this shaft. All right, we can see how nice all of these guys you know, cleaned up in here. Um, some of them I gave a little bath to again. Doing a final inspection before I start uh, reassembling, and I got a little piece of looks like blue plastic. This looks like a barrel, you know, a, a cutout from a chemical barrel or something, um, right there that was lodged in one of the impellers. This impeller has a little wear in there. Not a big deal. 
uh, you know, these just look fantastic. I want to wipe them off, make them as clean as possible, but big, big difference than uh, what we had, what we started with after that 10%, 15% muratic bath. Now's the time we want to examine our individual diffuser plates. These plates are designed to actually be the most wearable part of this booster pump. We'll look for spiderweb cracks. Also, sometimes the rim around the edge will wear off. These are easily replaceable. They only cost five or six dollars a piece. These parts are designed to wear out and by replacing them, we gain a lot of longevity on our pump. Okay, here's what our diffuser plates look like. Brand new ones um, from Goulds. Got our model number on there. And just pop them out of the pack. And reassembling the stages. So we're now going to reassemble our booster pump. Whenever you disassembled it, you'll notice there are some spacers. I probably should have mentioned this before, but if possible, write down between which stages the spacers are. I didn't do this this time, but the most important spacers are the ones here and the ones that'll be here at this end. I've put five spacers back here, six spacers. I actually need to remove a couple of those in this area, and then I'll randomly place them between the stages here. If you've got everything cleaned off correctly, everything should slide back on this shaft very easily. It should be very smooth. Uh, you can put a little petroleum jelly on there if you'd like uh, to help things go on. Okay, we've got our snap ring back on here. Uh, our tubes re reassembled, and notice it looks a lot cleaner than it did before. All this uh, calcium and sodium buildup is gone. Everything moves smoothly now. So we should be ready to reinstall the tube on here. And remember, this is a reverse thread tube, so uh, go the opposite way whenever installing it. All right, we can see everything's now nice and much shinier. Spins much easier than the one before, so we are looking real good on our individual stages on here. Once you get it reassembled, you can power this pump up, but only turn the power on for just a second to make sure that it's running quietly. Don't recommend running these pumps without fluid going through there. You can cause damage to it. All right, so we got our booster reinstalled here. Still haven't got the tools cleaned up. We're on a pro switch. Boy, got some apple wash in there. Sure hope that doesn't stain. <laughs> pro switch works. So we're shooting proportioner right now. I'm going to switch to water. Flush this out of the line. Not a bad distance on there, so this booster pump has been rebuilt. An hour and a half, two hours or so. Flood this out of the line to we'll go ahead and clear it. Go. We're starting to get to some water here. Let's see. Pro switch is working on both the proportioner and on intake. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Only 14 vertical paces, just about 42 feet 
on the uh, three-quarter horsepower booster that we have rebuilt. Hey guys, thanks for watching this. If y'all have any questions, feel free to drop me an email. Um, it'll be here on the inside, the end slide here of this video. Hope everybody has a great day and wash on.